and Molly, I started recording. Thank you. Hey everyone, welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. Today we have Molly from the Molly Bird with us ready for another exciting class. Today we'll be crocheting the Karen Crochet Motif Bolero. My name is Lillian from Your Inspirations and I'll be helping with any questions you might have during today's class. Feel free to ask questions in the chat here and we'll be sure that Molly answers them. And while we're waiting to get started, oh sorry, while we're getting started, uh, feel free to let us know where you're watching from. Thanks. Over to you, Molly. Awesome. Well, hello, everybody. It's nice to see a lot of familiar faces here. Um, as Kelly said, you can keep your view on speaker. I tend to switch mine to gallery so that way I can see your faces. So if you're sharing your screen, fantastic. Or, you know, sharing your face, that's awesome. I get to say hello to all of you. I don't feel so lonely out here. <laughs> um, super excited to join Michael's and your inspirations again right here for another community classroom. And this time I get to do some crocheting. I love to crochet and to knit. I do both over on the Marley Bird YouTube channel and on marleybird.com. So if you're ever interested in expanding your skills, go ahead and join me over there. Today, we are going to use this lovely yarn that is exclusive to Michael's. Let me see if my camera will get, there we go. I just have to get my eyes out of you. Um, it's <laughs> um, Karen Cotton Angel Cakes. This yarn is, I think it's 40% cotton. Let me make sure, 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. It's a beautiful yellow color that we are going to be using. I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. And we're going to learn to make some crochet motifs that you can then put together and make a crochet bolero. Here's the cool thing about crochet or uh, um, crochet motifs though, as most of you know, being crocheters, you could also just put them together and create an afghan or create a poncho or create a sweater. You could do whatever you want with them. So we're gonna dive in, learn how to make the basic crochet motif, how to do the half motifs, because they're a little bit different as far as construction. And then we'll discuss how to seam them all together. It's a very simple whip stitch seam, but We'll go over that as well. For today's class, you will need the free pattern. And I'm assuming that they are going to put that in the chat. Usually that's where Lillian or uh, Kelly will tag it into the chat so you guys can follow along with me. I'm going to follow along for my end, the majority of my end with the chart, which should absolutely coincide with the words. For me, as I'm teaching and and doing it trying to keep track of what's going on it's easy for me to look at the chart so um whether you follow the chart or the words it's the same thing just grab some yarn grab a hook and grab the pattern you can join in if you're catching this on the replay fantastic you can grab your stuff as well and join in or feel free to watch it all the way through and then go back and watch it again later and make one of these motifs that's the beauty of having these classes recorded all right so the pattern is now listed in the chat if you are watching this on YouTube, I know it's in the video description as well, so you can absolutely find it there. All right, so Kelly, I'm gonna to go to my hands and we're gonna get started. Marley, it appears we have been disconnected from the overhead camera. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it is, it's been a minute. All right, so I'm gonna join the meeting again. I'm sorry. No problem. Hey, we were connected for 30 minutes. Maybe that was the limit, <laughs> no, just joking. Um, so crazy, so we'll do this, out. we got this. We'll just take a second. Talk amongst yourselves. Where is everybody coming in from today? Well, we have people from all over, from Austin, Texas, California, from Ireland, um, all over, really. It doesn't want to connect. Oh, no. What is happening? <laughs> what is happening? We test this out, you guys, just so you know. Like, we totally test this out, and I've been on. I'm getting like a waiting signal. It's like not wanting to connect. Yeah. Live TV, everybody. This is what you get. I'm gonna try again. Oh, goodness. Okay, it says waiting. Okay. You should be. You guys didn't really want to learn how to make a bolero, did you? You just wanted to sit and chat. We could do that too. All right, here we go. Continue. Um, give me a second. All right. Okay, so I got to turn my video, see if it'll work. Okay. 
Now we're going to hope that it stays that way. <laughs> Did it go back vertical? And we're back horizontal. And we're back in the game. Back. Okay. <laughs> hey, awesome. All right. Can they see my hands? Everybody see my hands? Thumbs up. Fantastic. Okay. This <laughs> is the crochet motif bolero made with the Karen cotton angel cakes. This thing is very soft, very cushy. Um, you can see this is the corner piece right here, but if I pull this over, this is actually the neck portion. Okay. So this here is where it would cross over your neck would pop out right here. So these bits right here, this is the half motif I was talking about. When you make these half motifs, you have to turn your work back and forth. So I want to make sure that we do go over this after we go over how to make these motifs in the round. All right. So that's what we are going to be doing today. Any questions so far? Nope. Everybody's shaking their head. Nope. Good. All right. So I'm going to set this aside and I'm just going to pop it right up there. So it's out of the way. This is the start of the motif. I think this is through round five and it's on round six that you actually, well, after round five, you cut your yarn and you rejoin at one of these corners, which I did. Like I, I cut my yarns so that way we could join at that corner. But when we get to this part, I'm going to give you guys a tip so that way you don't have to cut your yarn, but I'm going to set that aside. We're going to start at the very beginning. Now, if you don't already know this, when you're working with these cotton angel cakes, when they're caked up like this, you can pull the yarn from the middle. And if you don't have the yarn poking out like this right away, just kind of squish things apart right here and just kind of go in and grab a bit. Even if you grab out a little bit of the yarn guts is what I call them, you're going to use it up. So you're going to be just fine. I like to get myself out right there. I'm using a G crochet hook. Everybody asks me, this is a basic Susan Bates crochet hook. It just has a handle on it because I, my, I crochet so much, my hands cramp up. So I need a handle on my crochet hook that um, helps out a lot. And this has been wonderful for me. I've placed a slip knot directly onto my hook and we're going to begin with six chains and then we will join with a slip stitch. So simply chain six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Come all the way over here to the first chain you did and you're going to insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull loop through the loop that's on your hook. So you've created like a, a little circle here, okay? Around that circle, we're going to put 15 double crochets. And that does not include the first chain three. So we're gonna chain three, and this chain three counts as a double crochet, but it does not count as one of the 15. This is actually like number 16, okay? So once you chain three, we're gonna place 15 double crochets around these chains. So you yarn over your hook, go into this big gaping hole right there that we've created, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. Now, if you're using this cotton yarn, you do want to make sure that you're keeping your stitches a little bit snug. You don't want to get them all overextended. Otherwise, your squares are going to be too big and your bolero is ultimately going to be too big. So remember that you want to make sure your loops are the same size as the hook you're using. And when you're pulling up your yarn, make sure that you are keeping those loops the same size as the hook because it keeps your stitches consistent. If you notice when I go, pull up my yarn like this and I yarn over and I go to pull through two, I will usually grab the base of the two loops that are beneath my hook to pull through. It just he, helps keep them a consistent size. So I'm not purposely trying to like cover stitches for you. It actually is helping me keep, create stitches that are very nice and uniform. And so that's why I hold my, my loops, I guess, at the bottom as I'm creating things. It just helps everything be nice and tidy. So I have four there. I'm going to keep going.
So that's 13 so far. And I'm not trying to like go super fast, but I figure if you know how to make a double crochet and you can count to 15, you can do this. I think I said that was 12 or 13. I think that's 14. I think this is 15. I'm gonna have to go back and count just to make sure. So I usually will extend that up so it doesn't go anywhere. Remember your chain three does not count as your in your count of 15, but it does count as a double. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, perfect. Once you get your 15 double crochets worked around, completely ignore your tail, okay? You can completely ignore it. You wanna count up and in the third chain that we began with, so not the first one, not the second, but in the third one, simply stick your hook into that third chain and join with a slip stitch, okay? So we're gonna join with a slip stitch. When everything is said and done, you can use this tail to weave in your, um, use the tail, weave in your end, and you can also tighten up that little bit, uh, the center bit a little bit if you want to, totally up to you. But that is the end of round one. When we start round two, we want to increase I, I think I'm using the word correctly, exponentially in the sense that you're gonna put a double crochet into one stitch and then you'll chain one and a double crochet into the next stitch and a chain one and a double crochet in the next stitch. So we're gonna ultimately have 15 double crochets plus our chain three, and they're all gonna be separated by a chain one, okay? So that's gonna give us a nice um, increase to the round. So here's a chain three. And now I need to start with my chain one and then double crochet. So that's where in the pattern it says to chain four. I just want you to understand what that is. So we have one, two, three, which counts as the double. The fourth chain would be that chain one that I'm saying is gonna be in between each of my doubles. So if you wanted to grab a stitch marker and place it into that third chain that you did, that will let you know that, hey, when you come back around and you join with the slip stitch to the third chain, that is your third chain. Do you have to use a stitch marker? Absolutely not, but I do know people who find it easy to do. All right, so follow your, what the pattern, the words actually say your chain four. So you're not gonna put your first stitch here because that chain three there, remember that counts as a double. So you go to the top of the next double crochet and place a double crochet there. Then you chain one and you're gonna place a double crochet in the next double crochet. And we will do this all the way around. And those chain ones are gonna make it so that our, our piece doesn't cup up on itself. It's gonna make it so that the circle increases out correctly. This yarn, it's very nice to work with. To me, I find cotton yarn actually a little difficult to work with. Again, it goes back to my hands cramping up on me. But with the Karen cotton yarns, either whether it's cotton cakes or cotton angel cakes, I find that little bit of acrylic that's added to the, uh, to the cotton allows for a little bit of a bounce for me to not have my hands cramp. Um, so I find it very enjoyable to use. Plus it's completely different from like, say Lily Sugar and Cream, you guys, um, in that that's like, like in my mind, I think of that as a dishcloth sort of cotton. This cotton is, is a little bit different. It feels really good on your skin. It washes up very nice. It doesn't like look tired and old when everything is washed um, and put in place. It's just, it's just a beautiful, beautiful yarn. I really do enjoy working with this yarn quite a bit. And again, it is exclusive to Michaels. So you would have to go to the Michaels store, order from michaels.com to grab yourself some of this yarn. And um, word to the wise, <laughs> it goes fast. So like towards the end of the season, if you haven't gotten any and you find some at the store, you need to get it. Like don't, don't hesitate. Don't wait for a coupon. Don't wait for, you know, whatever. <laughs> just, just get the yarn. Like just trust me on this, all right? When you get to the end, Make sure you do that chain one and we're gonna join with a slip stitch to that third chain. Remember, that's the one I marked. Now I can't get into that chain with my hook with my stitch marker in it. So I'm gonna take my stitch marker out and then go into that third chain and join with my slip stitch. 
And just because I don't want to have to redo my entire round by finding a mistake on the next round, I pause right here and I count my stitches again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And that was my original chain three. Okay, I'm gonna grab a drink of water real quick and kind of check on all of you. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Looks like you guys are working along diligently. All right, so, you know, I'm gonna have to pop a cough drop in my mouth, y'all. Allergies have got me. <coughs> they are uh, sneaking up on me. Okay, hopefully this will work. <coughs> I apologize, you guys. Okay. We are on round three. Now on round three, we're also going to increase, but this time we're not increasing with chains. Actually, in each of those chain one spaces, we will place two double crochets. So we're still gonna place one double crochet into the one double crochet but in each one of the chain twos, we're gonna place, or not chain twos, the chain ones, <coughs> excuse me, we're gonna place two double crochets. So we start off with our chain three. If you wanna put a marker in that third chain, you can. Otherwise, you continue on, and in each one of the chain one spaces, you will do a double. And then when you see the double crochet, you're gonna put a double there. While I'm doing this round, I'm gonna mute myself because I feel another cough coming on. Am I good? Can you hear me? Yes, okay. Sorry, I tried to mute. Guess it didn't work. That's all right. How are we doing, Lillian? Anybody have any questions? We're doing great. Um, I'm wondering if you will be able to go over the chart and the stitch key at some point during today's class? I could do that. I could do that. Where are we at on time? All right, we'll try and get through the best I can. Super. Let me get through this part. Yes, you are doing two double crochets in each one of the chain one spaces. So that is your increase. So literally just between these two double crochets, just go into that big old space and do two doubles. And then on top of the double, do a double. So we're gonna get a nice circle happening here. I'm curious how many of you have used the Karen cotton cakes. Like they are, they are some of my favorites. I have, I have my own little personal stash of them. And this color is beautiful. It just feels so good in your hands, right? It does feel really good. I apologize for coughing, you guys. Just sneaks up on you, doesn't it? In the most inopportune times. Almost done. 
I know it feels like it takes a long time to get around just these few stitches. But the good news is once you get around all of this, the next round is where you begin to build the corners of your square. And it's kind of a unique little way the instructions are written and charted. So I do want to make sure I get to that so I can show you how that all works up. coming to the end. I finish off with the two double crochets into that chain one space. I come over here as my microphone drops. We are just having all the fun today. Okay. I come over here to the chain three and I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the chain three space. Does everybody's little piece look just like that. Yep. Oh, look. Yes, it totally does. Awesome. Awesome, you guys. All right. Okay, so as we go on to round four, round four is interesting because we have to create our corners and it's a very um, interesting way to do it. So round four has us begin with the chain one and that chain one does not count as a stitch. Okay, you guys, but what does count as a stitch is you're going to put a single crochet into that same spot where you did your slip stitch into the chain three, okay? When you finish your single crochet, if you have a marker, simply put a marker into the top, what looks like the chain behind the loop on your hook after you complete your single, put that there. That will help you find where you're gonna join at the end of this round. Now, here's the interesting part. If you are looking at the chart, you'll see that it looks like it has a chain five. Then there's like this long sort of line here, which is interesting because it doesn't actually tell you what that line is. But if you read the words, you'll know that it's supposed to be a slip stitch. So here's what we're doing. Once you do this single crochet, you're going to do a chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. Then you're going to slip stitch into the first chain that you did. So it's the fifth chain from hook put a slip stitch there. So this, it's like a really big Pico. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, that's essentially what it is. But what's going to happen here is just like we worked around those chains down here to, st to start our motif, we're going to work around these chains here to create our corner on the next round. So you'll do that chain five and then you skip two double crochets. So here's one, here's two, and then there's the third one. So you're going to put a single crochet in that third one. So you skip two and put one single crochet. So ultimately, if you're looking at the chart, you've done a single here, you've done your chain five, and that long line on the chart is actually just that slip stitch that you did right there to create this sort of big pico. You skipped two doubles and you put a single into the next. Now we've got to work our stitches over so that way we can do another kind of pico thing over here for our other corner. Because this is one corner. That there is this here underneath all these stitches. It's that little space right there. So what we're going to do is chain two, skip two doubles, put a single into the next double, chain three, skip two doubles, put a single into the next double, chain two, skip two doubles, put a single into the next double. And this is where we create our next corner. 
Okay, so I'm pretty sure if I scroll up, I'm gonna make sure, I think this is where it says it's the start of the repeat. Um, yeah, this is the start of the repeat for round four. So you're going to chain five. Come all the way back here to the first chain you did and you'll do a slip stitch. Now do not work into the same one that you just did that single in, right? You're gonna skip one double, skip the second double, and in the following one, do a single crochet. See, get that little Pico looking thing. Now we're gonna create all of these sort of the side stitches of your square. So you chain two, skip two, do a single into the next, chain three, skip two, do a single into the next, chain two, skip two, do a single into the next, and now we're back to the next corner. Everybody with me so far? How we doing? Okay, I see all of you working really hard. Okay, I'm to the next corner, which would be the, where my repeat starts. So I'll chain five. Come to the first chain I did and work a slip stitch. Skip two doubles. Do a single into the next double. Chain two. Skip two. Do a single into the next. Chain three. Skip two. Do a single into the next. Chain two. Skip two. Do a single into the next. Okay. Now this is going to be our last repeat. And I know that simply by looking at this, I've already got three corners. And if it's a square, it's only going to have one more corner, right? But as I'm coming, after I create my corner and I'm coming across, I won't have to do this last single crochet here because I already started with that. Okay. So I'm going to chain five. Come down here to the first chain, join with a slip stitch, skip two, single into the next, chain two, skip two, single into the next, chain three, skip two, single into the next, chain two, skip two, and this is where it would be a single into the next, but our single is already there. So you will join with a slip stitch into the single, which right here, that's it, right? That's where we marked it. So I'll just join to my single and finish it up. You guys see that? Good, good, good. I'm looking at everybody seeing. Yep, I see it. Tracy's all about it. She's got it going on. Awesome. Okay. So doesn't look like much yet. Looks like it could be the start of like, like a teddy bear or something, right? If we didn't have these down here. Um, so what we need to do is build on these large picos that we've created and build into these chain spaces that we have created. So what we're going to do is continue on in this path, but we're going to build stitches into those picos. We'll do one single into the chain two, five doubles into the chain three, one single into the chain two, and then build our corner into that pico. So it's a bunch of that repeat, okay? So here is where we are continuing on. This would be round five. I'm looking at the time. Hey, Lillian. At 10 minutes till, will you give me a heads up and I will make sure to go over the chart to make sure we're um, 
on the same page there? Yeah, sure thing. Perfect. Um, just a quick question. Um, yes. We have someone that um, is just catching up and they missed the join at the beginning of that round. I wonder if you could just, because I know we had the slip stitch at the start. The slip stitch at the start. Sorry. Um, I'll just read the question. Okay. Uh, I was so still uh, on a phone call. Uh, missed the join beginning of that round. So we did a slip stitch down here. Mm -hmm. So we chained one and we did a single right here. And that that's what we did at the beginning. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So at the end of this round, after you've done your slip stitch here, we want our first stitch of this next round to begin in this, this I'm going to keep calling it a large Pico. It doesn't say that in the pattern, but that's what it is. It's a large Pico. So I want to slip stitch over here into this Pico. So I'm literally just putting my hook into that, that big old hole that we've created with that chain five. I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop and pull that loop through the loop on my hook. So now see how it just looks like that little chain there just slipped over right over here to this, this chain five space. And it looks like, Hey, now we get to start building stitches over here. They're exactly where we want them to be. Okay. This is where you'll begin with a, ch a chain three. And once again, this does count as a double crochet. So if you want to mark the third chain, which is just that loop behind the loop or the chain behind the loop on your hook, you can, okay? Now we're going to put four double crochets right here. Then we're gonna chain three and we're gonna put five double crochets over here. So all of that is going into this Pico space, right? So a yarn over, go into the Pico and I will do four doubles. So here's one, here's two, three, and four. Now just, just a reminder, this chain three counts as a double. So there really are five doubles there, okay? Then you're gonna chain three. This is our corner. This is our chain three at the corner. And now we're gonna do five doubles on this side. So we're gonna get symmetry, right? So I just do my five double crochets over here on this side. See that? Okay. Now we have this big chain two space here that we created on the last round. We're gonna do a simple single crochet into that chain two space. Now, right here in this chain three space, we want to do five double crochets. So we yarn over our hook, go into the chain three space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. You're probably very familiar with double crochets at this point. So we wanna make sure we get five of them right here. One, two, three, four, five. We go to the next chain two spot and we do a single crochet, okay? That completes essentially one part of our square, right? So now we jump over here. We're going to come back over here to this Pico and we're going to essentially do all of this. Only this time we don't start off with our chain three. We're going to start off with an actual double crochet. It does look like cat ears. Absolutely. So I come over here to this Pico once again, see how like, it's just so convenient how everything's just that big hole. And I will do my doubles. So I'm gonna put five of them this time. I'm gonna start off with five because I need five and five separated by those chain threes. So one, two, three, four, and five, chain three. And then I'm gonna do five over here.
Okay, so there's five there. And then once again, go to the chain two, I would single, go to the chain three, I do five doubles. Come to the chain two, do a single. And then I'm back to my chain five Pico. I'm gonna set this down so you can see. Can you see how that's starting to create and just goes all the way around? So you would continue doing that until you get back over here to where your marker is and you would join with a slip stitch and the pattern then says to cut your yarn and then move on to round six, which tells you to join your yarn at one of these chain three spaces, okay? So that's what I've done here. I cut my yarn, I actually went ahead and woven in, I, woven my ends so that way it looked cleaner for you guys so that way we could join right here in one of these chain three spaces but i want to mention something you know when we started this particular round that we we were we had our slip stitch right here right and then we had to slip stitch over here into where our chain five pico was so that way our yarn was in the correct place right so one of the biggest hesitations a lot of people have about doing motifs is that there are a lot of ends to weave in, right? So if we're gonna cut our yarn at the end of round five and rejoin it again on round six, we're gonna have even more ends to weave in. So I'm just gonna throw this out there. This is not on the pattern. This is purely a bonus to you because you get me as your teacher. What I would do is if you don't wanna have to cut your yarn every time, I would join with your slip stitch right here. And instead of fastening off, I would slip stitch up this one and this one and this one and this one to get to this spot where you're supposed to rejoin your yarn. And then I would start off with your chain three and or chain one single crochet and then carry on with your round six. Does that make sense? I mean, to me, that's what I would do. Uh, as far as I can tell, I don't see why that wasn't done that way. I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, I don't know, but that's for me, that's what I could do. It could be an aesthetic thing that they just didn't want you to have slip stitches going up that, but um, I don't know. That's what I would do because then you have less ends to weave in. Beautiful, Tina. Beautiful. She is a fast little crocheter. Okay. So that, I'm going to set this aside now. Good. I'm glad you like that tip because that's what I would absolutely do. Um, and then I'm just going to pull off some yarn here so that way I can finish this later because <laughs> I don't want to be stuck with having to have even more ends. All right, so we're going to teach it the way it's written, <laughs> but I just wanted to give you that tip. At the end of round five, you finished off with the slip stitch. You are, are rejoining your yarn now. So you're gonna grab your yarn and it says, join yarn with the slip stitch to any corner chain three. So you're gonna pick any corner chain three you want. And we're gonna join with a slip stitch. So for me, I usually will put a slip knot on my hook and then I will go to the chain three area, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull through. So I've joined with a slip stitch, okay? So if you do my little trick where you slip stitched up to here, this is where you would be. This is exactly where you would start. This is as if you had just slip stitched into that chain three. You see why I don't understand why it wasn't written that? I, I don't get it, but you know, whatever, it's good. Once you get here, you carry on, you chain one, and then you're gonna do all of this into this chain three space, okay? So you're gonna put a single crochet into the chain three space. You're going to chain three and do another single crochet into the chain three space. So we've got this little chain three out here, which is still the corner. Now we're going to chain one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to place a double crochet into the top of that single crochet we did that was in that chain two. So you come all the way over here and you do a double crochet right there. So we've skipped all of these stitches. We chain three. And in the center of these chain fives, you can think of that as a shell. So we're going in the center double crochet, we want to put a single. Then you're going to chain three, do a double in the top of that next single. Chain 
chain five. Come all the way over here to this corner. We're gonna put a single, chain three, and put another single. And then you keep going, you keep repeating this all the way around, okay? So this starts off to give you this really pretty corner edge, okay? I'm gonna keep going, how am I on time? I'm gonna keep going around this because I wanna get you started on round seven. Um, and then I can get you started on the, mo the half motif. So I'm just gonna keep going here really quickly, okay? As quickly as I can. So I would need to chain five. Do a double into the single. Chain three. Put a single into the middle double. Chain three. Double into the single. Chain five. Round up the corner. So I do a single, chain three, and a single. I know I'm going fast, you guys. That's the great thing about replay. But I want to make sure I get this to a point that you can actually carry on with the instructions. You know what I mean? Thank you. Those of you who are just like, I appreciate that. <laughs> the next corner. Oops. One, two, three, four, five. All right, when you get to the end here, you wanna make sure you end with one, two, three, four, five chains, and then put a slip stitch into the top of that first single crochet. Right there. Okay. So here's your square at this point after round six. Round seven, I'm gonna get started with it on you because it, <laughs> again, it starts off with you having to slip stitch over to the corner, you know, once again. So we can, just like I had suggested before, you're gonna get over here to this corner. We need to slip stitch over there. So that way our first stitch begins there. And then we jump in with our instructions. So it's chain three. And then we put two doubles into the same, same corner space. Okay, so we're gonna do two doubles. So one, and two, then we chain two. So this is a little bit different, okay? So we're gonna chain two, and then we put three doubles over here. Remember your first chain three counts as a double. So we are um, symmetrical here. One, two, three, okay. Now in this chain five space, you have one, two, three, four, five, six double crochets that go into that chain five space, all right? So you're not gonna be going to the actual chains. Don't do yourself any sort of brain damage trying to manage that. Just go into that big space just like we've been doing all along. So we put six double crochets there. And then you're gonna skip this double crochet. And then you're going to put four double crochets here, skip this single, four double crochets here, skip this double, six double crochets here. That brings you back to the next corner where you'll do three doubles, chain two, three doubles. I'm thinking you guys can understand how that works up now because now it's just a matter of me just doing double crochets. So you can see this is really how this completes the edge of the square 
the only following round is a round of single crochets like into every stitch that you're creating on round seven and then you're doing your increase here in the corner so that way you get this really lovely um nice single crochet edge out here to be able to join with okay so as far as the body of this piece i think you absolutely have that down okay you you could got that i want to show you just really quickly while i have you here how to get started on the half motif because we made this in the round but imagine if we wanted to make this but we only want half of it right so if like you were imagining folding this in half we would need to know how do we work these rows because we aren't going to go in the round how do we work them back and forth so that way you can get this half motif and that's what you're essentially doing when you do the half motif. So I already have the half motif started. And I want to make sure I have this all up here correctly. I started off with my chain six. Then I did, I joined with a slip stitch. I chained three. And then I have nine double crochets in here. So that's where I am. I'm at the end of round one. I've done nine double crochets. You don't join over here. You don't do anything else except turn your work. And this is where you would start row number two. So you would do chain three. Again, that's going to count as a double. And on this round, just like before, you're going to do one more chain. So that would be our chain one in between our double chain one, double chain one, double. You guys remember that? So as you create this first double, remember, you're not going to place it right there because that chain there represents the stitch that would go into that spot. So you're gonna place your first double crochet over here. So you just come over here and place your first double. And what you're gonna realize here is, I mean, you're literally just working everything you did on the full motifs. It's just, you're doing it in the half basis, right? It's, it's just, relatively easy. And I know some of you are going to be like, well, if you're turning your work on the half squares and you're not turning your work on the full squares, aren't your, your stitches going to look different, right? Cause we all recognize like there's a front of a stitch and a back of a stitch and yeah, your motifs will look slightly different, but quite honestly, you guys, once they're all put together and you have everything in place, you're not going to notice it. Like that's just the nature of the beast. Like you're just not going to notice it. Don't forget to do your chain one before you do your final double crochet into that chain three space. Okay, not space, I'm sorry. The chain three, the actual chain. Don't go into the space, go into the actual chain. It makes for a cleaner, a cleaner edge. So on the next one, you simply would chain three. And then just like before, you're gonna put a, a double, no, you're gonna put two doubles into each one of the chains or not. We try this two doubles into each one of the chain one spaces and one double into each one of the doubles. And when you get to the end over here, you'll want to make sure that you do do the last stitch into the third chain over here. And then you would just continue on working back and forth. Okay. Is that enough of an explanation for you guys? Can I go on and show you the chart? Okay, good. That's that makes me happy. Because what I would like to do is show you the chart now how this um, comes together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a screen share, Kelly, and make it so that let me get the let me get the actual pattern a little larger here. Share my screen. Can everybody see the pattern on the screen? Yes. Okay. So I'm obviously on page three of the pattern. Okay. So you, you can obviously look at your own pattern for all the written instructions, but if we're looking at page three, let's take a look at the square itself and I'm going to make it a little bit larger. So that way it's bigger on the screen. And as you're reading a chart like this, they obviously will always give you a stitch key over here. But as I mentioned, there's this one little bit right there. You see that little like flat looking something flat line uh they don't really tell you what that is over here and that's just whoever made this chart just decided that they wanted the pico portion to look a little wider than it really is uh in reality because it makes the following round of chart stit symbols look better um but that's the beauty of 
having the words is that we are able to go back to the words and just confirm what we're looking at, right? So when you're reading a chart like this, and the first thing you want to notice is that you see how all the numbers are all on the same side. That's a clue to you that this, this particular piece is made in the round by just, and not turning your work. Okay. So if these numbers were like this number one was over here and the number two was over here and three was over here and four was over here and five was over here, that would give you a clue that you're supposed to work these rounds and turn your work at the end of each round. Okay. But the fact that these numbers are all on the same side, as well as the slip stitch that you are using to join your work is always on the same side. That lets you know immediately that this particular chart is not made in the round by turning. You simply just work each round with the right side facing you. Does that make sense? Give me a nod. Yes, perfect. Okay. So you're gonna start down here at the bottom and these oval looking things are just what they seem to be. They're chains, right? They, they look almost like a direct representation of what a chain would look like. The little dot that looks like it could be absolutely invisible is a slip stitch, which on your crochet is supposed to be absolutely invisible, right? <laughs> so it sort of is a good direct representation there. So right here at the beginning, we can see that these six chains are where we start and we're gonna join with the slip stitch to the first one. We now have these chains here, which we know are our beginning chain. So we have a chain three. And once again, you know, you're gonna read it this direction Okay, you read it this direction because of this slip stitch right here at the very end is going to join to that chain three. Okay, so right here, if you look at each of these stitches, we know these are double crochets. They're essentially pointing to you where they're going to go. Now, somebody who isn't familiar with a lot of crochet charts or doing crochet in general might look at this and say, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to put all of these stitches in these six chains. Like I said, don't give yourself brain damage. Whenever something comes around like this, just put it in the big old space for that's available to you. So you're gonna put all of these double crochets in that big old space. And when in doubt, take a look at the actual sample. And if you see a big old hole there, <laughs> you know they all just went into that big old space. You know what I mean? Like, like be smart about it. Use the tools that you have available to you to make good judgment call of what's happening. Um, as you continue on, obviously you just keep reading chain three, right? And then there's this one chain right there. So in the written instructions, you'll see that it says chain four, but just as I taught it in the class, I said, okay, these chain threes here, they count as a double. And then the next chain counts as that one chain. Um, sorry. It counts as that one chain that is in between each of those doubles, right? So there's a chain one double on top of the double chain one, double on top of the double, chain one, double on top of the double, so on and so forth all the way around. Same thing with the next one. You can easily see it starts with the chain three. Then you have the two doubles into this one chain. Are we going to put it all into that one chain? And the crowd says, no, we're going to go into the space. So we're going to that space and you put a double into the double, so on and so forth. Let's jump up here to number five because number five is a little bit tricky here in that you come around on round four. I'm sorry, not round five. We want to go to round four. So you, you finish round three with that dot, you chain one, you single crochet, and then you have these five chains and then this funny looking thing. And you're like, what is that? Now I'm going to tell you that is not something standard. That is something that is specific to this chart. And the only reason I know what that is, even myself is by, I had to go up and read the instructions, be like, what is that? And once I was like, oh, it's just, it's essentially like the, the person who made this chart had, had those five chains and they were just, you know, like condensed together. And then they were, they like dragged it. It's like, they took one and was like, Whoa! we're going to stretch it over here. So that way we get it a little bit longer. And so now that probably used to be a dot and now it's a stretch dot. Okay. <laughs> so that long thing there is a, is a slip stitch to create that five chain Pico that we work into in our corners, everything else, you just can read it around. Now, if you are colorblind, this probably is a little bit tricky because the black and the blue look very similar. But one thing you will notice each round is its own color. So all of the stitches you see that are blue 
rep are represented for that round four when you're on round four. When you jump to round five, you'll see that they're all black. If you're colorblind, best thing I suggest to do is print this out and take a pair of or, or some colored pencils and color in like just kind of shade in the areas um that would be just for round five or just for round six or just for round seven or just shade in the areas that are like the even rounds or the odd rounds or whatever it is like use those tools to your advantage one thing i want to point out is when you come to the end of round four you join with the slip stitch right here but then you can see right here on round five there's a slip stitch right here you see that that's the slip stitch that allows us to shift where our beginning chains are going to start. You see that? So for me, at the end of round five, this is your joining slip stitch to the top of your three uh, beginning chains. So I would have had a slip stitch here, a slip stitch here, a slip stitch here, a slip stitch here, and a slip stitch here. So that way I could get to this exact point. Does that make sense? So that way I didn't have to cut my yarn. But that's what I would do. But this is why I became a designer, you guys, because I end up changing patterns all the time. So um, if you don't want to have ends, that's something you could do as well. You simply just slip stitch up to this point and be ready to go. Those of you who have done corner to corner, you know exactly what I'm talking about because we do the same thing when you're doing those. I'm going to shift gears and come down here to the half motif because on this one, we're not going back and forth, right? I mean, I'm sorry, we're not going in the round, we're going back and forth. One way to quickly identify that obviously is that this is not in a full motif circle. And you'll see that every row has the beginning chains on the opposite side. So row one is here, the beginning chains of row two are here, beginning chains of row three are here, row four is over here, so on and so forth. You can see that. The best thing to do when you're working half motifs, you guys, and I kind of glossed over this a little bit with the slip or the, the stitch marker is definitely use those stitch markers to your advantage. And if you're using the chart, the best thing to do is like, if I was on row three here and I know that I have a chain three, I would just look up here at the, at the end of row four, just to see where that last stitch needs to go into. And I can see here that stitch is pointing to that third chain. So I know that that third chain is what ultimately is gonna come into play for me. So I would put my stitch marker right there before I started my round three. And then let's look at round four. You have a chain one, single crochet. And then I can quickly see, oh, look, it's chain two. And then here's two more chains. So here's my chain four. But on row five, look, it's one, two, three, four, five, six doubles that all go into either those two chains or that big space, right? Um, I'll give you a little tip of my own. I would put those five doubles into the space and the sixth one, I'd actually either put into the second chain or the third chain just to give me a nice line, but that's just me because that's just what I would do. Um, that's just a total finishing thing that you could um, totally pull out if you want. But other than that, that's where you could use stitch markers to really help you as you're reading charts to know, hey, on that next round, I need to make sure I put my stitch marker like on, on round six, I need to put my stitch marker in that, in that single because on round seven, when I come back, look, I'm going to put two doubles into that single. You know what I mean? All right. So that's how you can read these particular pieces. Now, when it comes to assembling all of these together, first thing, make sure you have the right side of the pieces all facing out as you're assembling. This is essentially your layout of how this is going to go. But if you look up here on page two, you'll see that you're going to seam together three to three. So you have a total of six for the back. And then you're going to seam these together for what would be the right front on your body. And these would be the left front on your body. And then I would seam like this edge to this edge, and then this edge to this edge, as long as this is wrong side facing you. So when you attach the fronts to the back, make sure you're attaching them to where the, like the wrong sides are facing each other. So that way, you know, you don't have it all inside out and stuff. Um, and I'm going to go back to my face, Kelly. 
because I know that we're out of time here. Um, when you're seaming things together, the instructions don't give you any sort of specific sort of join that you have to do. There are a lot of different joins out there you could choose from. You could do a single crochet, you could do a slip stitch, you could do a whip stitch, you could do a mattress stitch. You, I mean, there's just the sky's the limit. You can decide really how much you want the, the seam to come into play for the design of your piece. On this particular piece, I saw that it was just whip stitch. Like the designer just took the needle and went through two stitches this way, two stitches this way, two stitches this way, two stitches this way. As simplest form of join as you can get, but really have fun with it. Like make it a slip stitch, do a different color, do something fun with it. If you wanted to take this pattern and make it longer, make it like a, um, instead of a bolero, like a duster, you absolutely could do that. You could turn this into a swimsuit cover, sky's the limit. And with the cotton yarn, that is a really fun thing you could possibly do. I feel like I have given you so much information here at the very end. I hope it was useful. If you are working on this project, make sure you share with us on social media. Okay. Hashtag make it with Michaels, hashtag yarn inspirations. And if you tag me, just do hashtag Marley bird or on Instagram, I'm the Marley bird. And I will be sure to smash your like button. Cause I love seeing your work in progress. It's so much fun. Um, and good job, everybody. Like I can see all of you guys who, who worked this up. It's really cool. So, um, okay. I have talked a ton. I'm going to give it back to Lillian. <laughs> Thanks so much, Molly. Thanks for joining us today, everyone, for this live community classroom with Michaels. Don't forget, as Molly said, please share your work with hashtag Make It With Michaels and hashtag Yarnspirations. And just a reminder that you can find more classes on michaels.com and the recording of today's class on michaels.com slash classes. Thanks again, everyone. And thanks, Molly. <laughs>